Superintendent's report. Uh, Mr. Brands is the, the acting tonight, so I'll let him get started. So. Okay. Thank you, Board President Townsend. Um, yes, I am acting as running the mean associate superintendent, but we do have um, our superintendent, Gina Thompson, uh, participating virtually, um, just like many of us being, being good role models. She had contact with someone and she is self-isolating, so um, she will be participating at different times virtually, but I'll be sure to call on her when we wish her to be. Um, she is muted though. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, this is a very- Let me clarify that I can unmute myself. <laughs> well, um, Mr. Farr, you need to do something about that. <laughs> Well, with that being said, we'll, we'll move to some really good stuff, which is going to be our student council reports. And the first up this round will be Sobola High School. Good evening. I'm Matthew Davis, the junior class president. And I'm Owen Gillette, the junior class representative. Tonight, we are going to highlight a few of the great things happening at Sobola. First year English teacher, Jose Villasenor, presented in Learning Forward's national webinar on hybrid teaching and learning. Sobola sports have had a fantastic fall season so far. The cross-country girls captured the district title and the boys took second place. The swim team girls also captured the district title and the boys took second. Junior Bennett Meyer Wills claimed his back-to-back -back district cross-country championship title. Aiden Dusek was named the most valuable male athlete for the district swim championship. Emma Amon was the most valuable female athlete for the district swim championship. Volleyball clinched the district title with their win over Gila Ridge. In the academic world, Cibola's culinary arts program was named an FCCLA Gold Chapter. Cibola Student Council held a virtual homecoming where Jake Lofton and Celeste Lohr were crowned king and queen. The third annual Cibola costume contest was held on October 30th. The, the math department won the group challenge. Mike Myers won the individual challenge. Auto teacher Edward Vargas was voted as the Region 1 Skills USA board member. Senior Sophia Merrick was elected as a Skills USA Regional Officer. Thank you for your time. It's always a great day to be a Raider. Our next student council report will be from Gila Ridge High School. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Alec Bustamante and I'm the student body president at Gila Ridge High School. And I'm here to show you and catch you guys up on what happened in the last two months. The ultimate athlete of the month went to Adriana Frost. She received this in recognition of her hard work, her passion, her spirit, and for overall being a great teammate. I actually received the ultimate Hawk of the Month award for the month of September. I received this for my dedication, my hard work, and my passion. Miss Julian received the ultimate teacher of the month award. She received this for her professionalism, her kindness, and for going above and beyond to make sure all her students can be as successful as they can be. And for the second time in a row, our janitorial crew got the ultimate staff of the month. They have become an essential part in making sure that our students can be as safe and as clean as they can during these times. On October 21st, the Gila Ridge Boys and Girls Golf Team took first in the district championship for the fifth year in a row. For the fifth year in a row. This is Kylie Gerber's fourth consecutive season winning the title. And for the boys, Davin Grant shot a 79 to win the title by seven strokes. And our football stays undefeated. Gila Ridge football showed Yuma who's boss when they dominated our rival school, Cibola. They ended with a final score of 41 to six. 
They are now undefeated 3-0 by every school in the district. Healy Ridge had its annual homecoming week from October 5th through October 9th. This year, our theme was the 1920s. We called it the Roaring Ridge. Both the distant learners and hybrid learners were able to participate in the Spirit Week. We encourage students to post their Spirit Day outfits on social media, tagging us and using the hashtag Roaring Ridge. Students had lots of fun with this because they were able to showcase their Spirit Day outfits. Gila Ridge recognized National Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Gila Ridge staff came together and all wore gold to take pictures to show their support. Students were also able to take pictures with the balloon arch donated by our counseling department. Gila Ridge Student Council will be hosting its first annual Cancer Awareness Week. This year, it is taking place this week from November 2nd through November 6th. This is meant to inform students on the harsh reality of these cancers with infographs and informational posters posted around school. As well, allow students to show their support by pinning colored ribbons on their backpacks as they enter school. And that's all I got from here at Healer Ridge. I wanna thank you guys all for all the hard work you guys are doing through these tough times. And I wanna thank you for the opportunity of letting us come here virtually um, and allow us to showcase our school. You guys have a great day and take care. And remember, it's always a great day to be a hawk. All right, and our last uh, student council report will be from Vista. Good afternoon, Superintendent Thompson, President Townsend, Associate Superintendents, and members of the board. My name is Jana Corona, student council representative. I would like to take a moment to share what Vista Lobos have been doing and to thank you for your time. Students have been using their health cards to promote well-being in their community by donating their hard earning points to contribute to human community. Food Bank, Amberley's Place, Crowd Road Mission, and One Tree. So far, the locals have been donated 55 meals to the Yuma Community Food Bank planted four trees, donated two hygiene kit to Mission Crossroad. One food kit has been, don has been donated to Amberley's Place. 26 students have been recognized for receiving two or more credits during term one. Teachers have been hunting down the credit hunters to recognize them for their hard work in a prize patrol style with balloons and treats. Congratulations to all the Lobo credit hunters and keep hunting for those credit levels. Each student has made a section of a totem pole representing their culture and diversity. Ms. Ramirez said it was very interesting to learn about students' background and family history. Some of the students migrated from Honduras, El Salvador, Guadalajara, Mexico City, among other places, and now reside in Arizona. We all have one thing in common. We are part of Vista and our beloved Yuma. Vista students have, Vista students have gone out to the community to reach out to 56 parents and students to let them know what they've missed and to come to hybrid learning and to join virtual in their classes. VISTA teachers are continuing to visit home to build relationship with parents and guardians and already have visited seven families in their school year. This is what VISTA Lobo has been up to. And once again, thank you for your time. Obviously, we have some wonderful things going on by our students and staff. And to continue that theme, I do have uh, the principal of Coffa High School, Mr. Mike Sharp, who I'd like to invite up to the podium. He is going to share some wonderful news regarding the MSC JROTC at Coffa High School for another year in a row. So, Mr. Sharp. Thank you very much, President Townsend, Governing Board, Associate Mr. Brianza. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity to be here this evening. 
Um, established in 2012, the Copa High School JROTC, Marine Corps JROTC. They're in their ninth year. What a what a ride it's been. Um, under the direction and leadership of Major Bernie and Sergeant Major Larman, the MC JROTC continues to progress and establish the path of excellence within our school district, our community, and beyond. Even during the pandemic, the program is strong as ever with 145 cadets. It is a very special privilege for me tonight to introduce the commanding officer of the MC JROTC, and uh, that is Office Commanding Officer Duckworth, and then also with her is the Executive, Os Executive Officer Oscar Galendo. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Second Lieutenant Galindo. I am a senior this year. This is my fourth year in the program. Uh, and as a, as a senior, I kind of keep pushing myself to become the Marine Aviator to the Naval Academy. Our command officer will now read you our mission statement. So, being a senior team, we have a mission. And the mission is the Copa High School Senior Disease is to train and educate young men and women in the fundamentals of leadership, citizenship, and military skills. We hope to build a core of cadets that will be productive and uh, members of our society and future leaders. We hope we set the example and show the values of honor, courage, and commitment. We are proud to say that we have been chosen for the Naval Honor School two years in a row. And our program for the school years of 2019 and 2020, we have been able to enjoy multiple successes throughout the year. With our drill team, their drill team placing first place in a regional event, qualifying for the MC Drill Nationals, which would have taken place in Daytona Beach, Florida this year. With our rifle team placing first place in the Arizona State JRTC Rifle Championships, which allowed one of our shooters to qualify for the MC Service Championships two years in a row. Our PT team took first place in the, the 29 Palms Raider Challenge, which would allow them to go to Georgia and compete in the National Raider Challenge in the upcoming year. And our JLAB team, our academic goal team, in their second year reaching level two and just missing an opportunity to reach nationals. This year in February, we received a mission capable inspection by the Community Inspection, which is a high rating for the Community Inspection. Uh, for school and community support, this year we are very limited in what we've been able to do due to the COVID-19. However, last year we managed to complete over 1,800 hours, and we were on track to complete over 2,500 hours before COVID-19. This year, we are limited, on, we are limited in what we are allowed to participate in. However, our color guard continues to be very active in our community, having already participated in a football game, and we have a couple more football games planned, along with other uh, on-campus events. In terms of competition, similar with uh, community service, we are limited in what and how far we are able to travel and what's open for for participation. Um, last year, as you heard, we, we managed to do very well and reach national qualifications for the drill team. This year, our air rifle team plans to work towards being our to qualify for national this year. As in the past two years, we managed to qualify for the state rifle championships. We also have a home drill week plan. So we, our home drill week usually kicks off in the springtime, and it falls on when we plan to have our home drill week for the third year in a row. We'd also like to thank the board and Ms. Jan Thompson and our principal, Mr. Sharp, for your ongoing support towards our program. It helps us on a day-to-day -day basis to keep going. And is there any questions? You are very happy with us. Great yes. presentation. Thank you very much. Okay. I'd like to be, bring uh, Major Bernie to the mic. He's going to explain the, the Naval Award that they just received. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, proud to be here. Glad you guys invited us back again um, for our second year in a row. 
some of you were at the board meeting, I think, last year when we went over the Naval Honor School Award. Same thing, if you weren't there, being a Naval Honor School Award for us, that's a huge deal. Um, especially since we've been in existence going on our ninth year. Um, you don't see that a lot. So we, we sprung to action pretty quickly in order to get this award. Um, being 10% of all Marine Corps Junior RTCs throughout the nation. So that covers Alaska, you know, Hawaii, all the way back down through the East Coast. So um, for us now, as uh, Cadet Galindo was telling you, he's trying to go to the Naval Academy. So we are put on a list. That list is sent out to every academy, Air Force, Army, uh, Navy. So it's out there and it says, hey, all these schools that are Naval Honor Schools are able to actually appoint someone. So our, our letter actually counts as an appointment, not just a, you know, me giving a letter of recommendation or Sergeant Major giving a letter of recommendation. So now we actually appoint them. So I, for us, um, not a lot of people understand it. The cadets didn't even understand it, how big of a deal this is. Um, but for us, uh, this is something we've been pushing for. And, he told me if I didn't do it in two years, I'd be fired. So <laughs> I think him and Mr. Sharp teamed up on me. But um, we did it, and we were able to get out in the community a lot more and do a lot more competitions. And that goes all back to my theme, one team, one fight. If it wasn't for Miss Gina all the way at the top, through Miss Lori, and down through Mr. Sharp, we'd never have that opportunity to do it. So we thank you guys very much. And this is one of your wins as well. Thank you. Thank you. As we talk about competitions, one thing I think we need to um, point out is that the JRTC is part of the AIA, which does allow them during this time to compete just like our athletic teams. So you will see them um, traveling, competing because of the dues we pay for the AIA and our commitment to the AIA. It allows our students to do great things and continue that development. So um, we look forward to hearing the results as the season progresses. Next, I'd like to invite Lori Honeycutt to um, speak about our next guest. Ms. Honeycutt. Good evening, Mr. Townsend and uh, Governing Board members, Mr. Brianza and Ms. Anderson. I really am excited to be up here today to have the opportunity to present to you a real hero of career and technical education. We have a lot of heroes in our uh, CTE division, but this gentleman stepped up to the plate uh, when we were desperately seeking um, a place for our CNA students to be able to test negative for COVID so that they could go in and do 40 hours of clinicals we just, um, the logistics of having each student uh, talk to their doctor and then get the test and then be able to go to the nursing home in a two day window was very challenging for 42 students. And um, Dr. Kanek um, graciously accepted our call and um, wrote a prescription for all of our students to be able to test at the YRMC Annex so that the students could get the test almost immediately and then participate in clinicals each Saturday. So it is with great appreciation um, that we acknowledge the work that he's done for career and technical education, and we knew that she would want to show uh, recognition to him as well. So, Dr. Fine. Thank you very much for having me here. Um, it's an honor to be here. If there's anything that I can do for the betterment of future healthcare army and my colleagues, I'm always going to be here available and will do my best to help everyone. Thank you very much. Next on my report, I'd like to invite uh, the principal of Yuma High School, Mr. Fritz, to come to the podium. Uh, on August 3rd, Mr. Fritz assumed the position of principal at Yuma High School, and we thought we would let him um, get his feet underneath him um, as the school year began, and then invite him to a board meeting to be officially introduced and um, say a few words. So, Mr. Fritz. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Branza. First, I'd like to thank the governing board, Mr. Tommy Zinn, uh, Mrs. Thompson, uh, Mr. Branza, and Ms. Anderson for this, this wonderful opportunity. Uh, it's, it's been a great few months, as Mr. Branza said. Let, let me uh, get my legs under me. Uh, I appreciate all the support, um, all the trust uh, that everyone has given me within our district. The, the other principals have been outstanding helping me. Um, everybody's, I'm always, I always have someone I can call if I, if I do ever need any support, so I definitely appreciate that. Um, and that's, that's really been the case since I've been in the district. Since 2004, I came uh, from Wisconsin in 2004 uh, to teach health and PE at Cibola. So I was teaching there uh, with Coach Bowman, Coach Evans. They, they really helped me out, just like everyone is right now uh, back then. And I taught PE, health, driver's ed, a little, a little bit of uh, adaptive PE as well uh, for about eight, nine years there. And I became our Ready Now Human Coach. I helped with the implementation of Cambridge into our district. So I was very fortunate to learn about Cambridge, learn about testing. Uh, it was Ames at the time, Cambridge testing, and then eventually into AC Merritt. And then, uh, well, five years ago, I was actually at the other, the old boardroom. I got to present myself when I was hired as an assistant principal. So over the last five years, I was fortunate to be an assistant principal at Small High School. I was fortunate to work with great principals with Mr. Branza and then Mr. Bosch, and then some other great leaders at Small and other assistant principals that I was fortunate to learn and learn from over the last few years. I uh, oversaw athletics for three years, and then I saw oversaw activities for a year, and then academics for about a, about a year, year and a half, and then in June, and I was fortunate to have the opportunity to move over to Yuma High School, and then in August, as you know, I became the principal. So I want to thank, especially the board, thank you for this opportunity. It means a lot to me, and it means a lot to my family. I'd also like to thank my wife, I'm sure she's watching at home, and my two kids. Uh, they support me every day. Uh, and with everything I do, they, they, they definitely my rocks at home, so appreciate that. So thank you very much, everyone. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, board President Townsend, Governing Board, that concludes my report. Thank you very much, and you did that very well. <laughs> Moving on, call to the public. Any person wish, oh, excuse me, no, I'm forgetting this corporate. Uh -oh. <laughs> it's at the bottom of my table. Really? Informational <laughs> items. Budget update and overview of 2020-2021 Yuma Union High School <laughs> District Internal Budget. It's just... really hard to overlook me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, tonight I have our m and budget. We are, we have currently spent 25% of our budget. That is through um, the end of October. So we've spent 20 million of an $80 million M&O budget at this point. Our capital, we have spent uh, 1%, actually 1% of our budget, uh, which is 164,000 of a $12.5 million budget. So um, as a reminder, we, those sound like uh, really large numbers that we have for contingency, but we are saving those funds for a, an actual purpose, which is our Summerton High School. Um, as soon as we get that on board, we will uh, start seeing those funds being used pretty readily, I'm sure. Um, with that, I want to go into just a little more detail tonight than my usual uh, just update. Just as a point of clarification, I think we have some confusion potentially out in our community um, with the, the closure that we had starting last March. We do not um, have an abundance of money that we saved because of our school closure. We did still have our facilities open. We still had our same utility bills. We still had our classified staff that in order to pay them, we had to keep them employed. So we were doing deep cleaning, we were doing maintenance, things like that at all of our campuses. While our teachers and our students were not there, we still had staff that were coming in and maintaining and making sure all of our facilities were in good working order. Um, we also um, had other costs that came up, such as unemployment. We're being hit pretty hard. Our unemployment every quarter is typically at about $4,000. The quarter prior to this one was 40,000, 42,000. We just received our unemployment um, just today. Actually, it's $105,000. So it's all the unintended costs that you have in addition to, um, you know, that come along with COVID. I'm not, uh, that is not um, 
any sort of attack or anything. I know you're employees that have filed for unemployment, but it's just the cost of doing business, and that's part of what we've um, encountered. So having said that, we have grant funds. So you think we have, um, you know, we've purchased several um, items for PPE, actually $3.2 million um, in PPE that we have purchased since March. We have the, the CARES Act is coming in, everyone thinks we have all this money coming in right now. I will tell you, we've not received one penny of grant funds yet for that. I'm not saying we won't get it, but we haven't received that. So that's all been our m and that we have fronted all of those costs for that at this point. Um, we are in the process of applying for uh, DEMA, which is related to the FEMA. Um, but I just found out yesterday afternoon that they have totally changed the way they're funding all of that. And so all of our, we put in a lot of work to get invoices for $3.2 million worth of stuff, submitted packages, and we were told just yesterday that they're going to deny all of that and they're doing a whole new process of funding. So we're not sure what that looks like yet, but all of that time and effort was for nothing at this point. But we will continue. We will go down the path of um, seeking those funds. We also have our um, ESSER funds, which is the government funds that go through um, next year. We will, that's our, that's our uh, final step. In the meantime, we have our stabilization grant. We don't know, here's the problem with that one, is they won't tell us until the end of November how much that grant is for. Um, it's all based on our 40 they count in funding. We won't know what dollar amount we're actually getting for that until the end of November, and we have to spend it by December 30th. So there's a whole lot of moving parts, and we're trying to make the best of all of our grant funds and be able to utilize all of that. But in the meantime, our m and funds are fronting the cost and bearing the burden of all of that. So fortunately, we have those funds to spend to be able to keep everybody as safe as possible and all our students uh, to bring them back. But um, just know we're doing the best we can, but it's important, I think, for everyone to know um, it's not like we have all this money that has come in and we already have, you know, that we have to spend in many different ways or that we have a big, huge savings because that's just simply not the case. Um, is there any questions that I can ask any or answer that um, you may have? Thank you for explaining it. Thank you. It was worth waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for not skipping me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you would have reminded me. <laughs> now we get to call to the public. Any person wishing to speak may present the information at this time only. All presentations are limited to a maximum of three minutes and a maximum of 15 minutes on each subject. Before you begin to speak, please identify yourself by clearly stating for the record your name. Comments by members of the Governing Board in response to any public comment will be limited to asking staff to review the matter or requesting rescheduling of the matter for further consideration at a later date. Do we have anybody who would like to address the board? See, then we'll move on. Consent items, adoption of items of routine nature and those that normally do not require deliberations on the part of the Governing Board. A board member may pull items which will be discussed well, uh, and then voted on. Uh, we do need to, on 5.2, routine personnel, pool number 66 and 67 for separate consideration. Is there a motion to, are there any other items that need to be pulled? And if not, is there a motion to accept the consent items, except for 5.2, 66, and 67? I move we approve the items, uh, consent items for seven, except for Okay. Motion made by Mr. Gwynn, second by Ms. Mellon, to approve the consent items presented, except for item 5.2, number 66 and 67. Is there any discussion or questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay. Uh, Team item number 5.2, routine personnel number 66. Uh, we'll entertain a motion to accept that and then I'll have it explained. I move that we accept the consent items for No, each one separately. Number 66. Number 66. Is there a second? Okay, Ms. Mellon has made the motion to approve. Item 5.2, number 66, seconded by Mr. Gwynn. Uh, Mr. Granza, would you like to explain this and uh, do the presentation, please? Absolutely. Uh, Superintendent Thompson, would you like to uh, explain it? 
Thank you so much. And thank you to Dean uh, Farr and Eric Patton for making it possible that I uh, continue to be at this board meeting. And thank you, Mr. Towns, President Townsend, for letting me unmute myself. Um, so I'm just thrilled to be able to speak to uh, these two items. Um, and Mr. Brienza, uh, because I don't have that one particular document, uh, is number 66. In, uh, does his last name start with an A? <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, as we get nearer and nearer and continue to uh, go to school facility board and seek funding, which uh, Ms. Cordery and myself were there again today, virtually, but we were there. Um, and we're, we know that there's a lion's share of work that needs to happen, and it's going to need a very talented leader uh, to lead that work. And I am thrilled to be able to bring to the board my recommendation for planning principal, uh, as well as maintaining a co-principalship position uh, for current San Luis High School principal, Lucky Arviso. He continues to uh, lead with grace, intelligence, passion, and all, all things that make a great leader. He's a, a role model for us all, and I'm really excited to bring that recommendation to you tonight. Again, he would remain as co-principal uh, with your approval, um, while also being the planning principal and principal at, San Louis, at Summerton High School. Is Mr. Arvisa going to... Uh say something or is that the plan? That wasn't the plan. Oh, well, was I, I have the gavel all in here. Okay. <laughs> President Townsend, uh, board members, uh, Superintendent Thompson, thank you for the kind words, uh, Superintendents. And uh, I just want to say that, that it's, it's a great honor. Obviously, if, if you guys approve it, a, a great honor. And I want to thank you for, for the confidence. Um, it, it's, it's a great opportunity. Um, not only personally, but, but I'm excited for the Summerton community because uh, obviously it's, it's something that they've been waiting for and they deserve it. And uh, I just uh, feel honored to be a part of it. Um, I do have uh, a lot of roots in Summerton. Actually, my dad was born and raised in, in Summerton, Arizona, and my grandfather, amongst other things, in the 40s and 50s, he was kind of the police and sheriff there in, in, in Summerton. So um, I'm excited. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so, so I'm extremely uh, excited for, for the opportunity and, and very thankful. And again, thank you for the confidence. If, if you do approve, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Hey, the motion on the floor is to approve item uh, 5.2, routine personnel number 66. Is there any questions, discussion, comments? Very done. We'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay, hey, next item is item 5.2, number 67. Is there a motion? I move that we approve 5.2, number 67. Second. Motion made by Ms. Bellin, second by Mr. Gwynn to approve uh, routine personnel item 5.2, number 67. Mr. Brianza, would you like to introduce that person, or? Uh, I'll turn it to Superintendent Thompson. She did a great job last time, so we'll, we'll go for <laughs> She's we'll dying that yes. again. <laughs> wow, that's like a, a, a statement of praise. Thank you, Mr. Brianza. <laughs> um, I am, again, honored to bring my recommendation for co-principal um, starting tomorrow, hopefully, uh, with Mr. Robert Jankowski, who is currently serving as an assistant principal at San Luis High School. Um, I didn't say this before Lucky, just in case he ran ran out the door, but I, I think he knows exactly what in, he's in for. Uh, building a school from the ground up is an incredible opportunity. It's also an incredible amount of work and learning um, I, I didn't build from the ground up, just part of a massive reconstruction of COFA. And the lessons that I learned and the relationships built um, have continued to be things that I valued, but um, also really helped me in informing future work. So I'm, I'm extremely thankful for that. And I know that Mr. Arviso will um, take part in that as well. So the co-principalship becomes a really important piece 
of the leadership of San Luis High School. We continue to see amazing uh, things come from San Luis High School students and staff, and that is not by accident, and it is also not alone um, from any one uh, staff member or even principal, and we all know that it takes a team to make great things happen. Mr. Jankowski has an excellent role model in Mr. Arviso. They have an excellent team um, all together with all the assistant principals and the other leaders on campus. So I am asking today um, for you to consider my recommendation to elevate Mr. Jankowski as he continues to work alongside of Mr. Arviso and um, elevate him to co-principal at San Luis High School. Thank you. Mr. Jankowski, I know you're not prepared with anything. Would you like us to? Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. I'm not prepared, but that's right. I have to put on the spot here. Um, again, I, I would just like to uh, to thank everyone, uh, thank you for the opportunity and stuff, and, and the confidence that you you know you put it into me to you know help uh, help continue leading San Luis High School in, in a positive direction. Like I said, and, you know, co-principals, I still got Mr. Arviso for another year or two years, so I can really kind of rely on him um, and continue learning from him and, and grow my leadership skills um, around his. And, and I've really always had a focus of a student-centered mindset. You know, always what's the best for the students. You know, what what is what is the best you know um, decision and, and and with the students in mind. So I continue to to lead that way and uh, and learn from the leaders and lean on leaders that we have in our district. So again, thank you for the opportunity if approved. And uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, the item before us is routine personnel number 5.2, uh, number 67. Uh, is there any other questions or discussion? Well, I have no. a question that I, I should have asked earlier. So it's about both these very qualified individuals. Um, and it's a financial question. You want to push your button so oh. we can hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. There you go. Thank you. Does the, um, does the financial impact to the district come out of the school level? Or does it come out of the district level? Is there a financial impact? It will come out of the district level. It will be a district level for our bond through our building of our school. Perfect. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion first. Now, so congratulations. Motion. Items 6.1 consideration to accept donations. I will read them to Cibola High School. Miss Amanda Copeland donated black upholstery fabric to the Cibola High School Library to update the chair cushions. Estimated value of the donation is $275. Mr. Stephen Fluckager donated four books to the Cibola High School Library. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Cibola High School Library. Estimated value of the donation is $40. Ashley Reiner collected four books to Cibola High School Library. Estimated value of donation is seventy dollars to Gila Ridge High School. Thunderbirds Foundation donated one thousand dollars to the Gila Ridge High School Boys Golf Program. Mesa del Sol Golf Course, Shaho Golf LLC donated one thousand one hundred ten dollars to the Gila Ridge High School Golf Boys Golf Program. Mesa del Sol Golf Course, Shaho Golf LLC. Donated $1,110. I don't know if that's a separate one or not to the Gila Ridge High School girls. Yes, it is girls' school golf program. They were fair. Kofa uh, High School Dooners Choose.org donated one Elmo document camera to the Kofa High School Special Services Department. Estimated the value of the donation is $259. And Mr. and Mrs. Chris Ingram donated that board in pieces for student projects. The Kofa High School Art Program, estimated value of the donation is $100. Mr. Scott Daly donated golf equipment to the Kofa High School Girls Golf Program, estimated value of the donation is $450. Fourth Avenue Gym Foundation donated signage for the Kofa High School Football Press Box, estimated value of the donation is $4,500. To San Luis High School, Justin Hale, Fourth Avenue Gym, Donated equipment to the San Luis High School Athletics and PE Department to use by, be used by student athletes in various sports and to enhance their physical training in the weight room. Estimated value of the donation is $5,000. To Vista High School, the United Way of Human donated a Dell laptop with Eve Spy Vision Screening Program to the Vista High School Health Office. 
estimated value of donation is $250. To Yuma High School, Yuma United Way of Yuma donated 160 backpacks and school supplies to the Yuma High School for students in need. Estimated value of the donation is $2,000. Ms. Caitlin Zakshesky, I hope, YHS librarian, donated 26 young adult graphic novels to the Yuma High School Library. Estimated value of the donation is $478. Donorschoose.org donated books to the Yuma High School Library. The Need to Read Project estimated value of the donation is $1,449. Mr. Wayne Crittenden donated 15 sets of basketball uniforms to the Yuma High School JV Freshman Boys Basketball Program. Estimated value of the donation is $900. It's a nice list of donations this month. Thank you, everybody. It is recommended that the governing board accept the above list of donations. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion made by Mr. Gwynn, seconded by Ms. Kravitz, to accept the vote uh, of the donations as presented. Any discussion or questions? I'd like to. Yes, go ahead, Mr. Gwynn. Keep my battery tight. Um, the note on all these donations are pretty good, but I'm making note of Justin Hale of Fourth Avenue. And this is not his first go around. Very well noted. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item, 6.2, consideration to accept enrollment stabilization grant. It is recommended that the governing board accept the enrollment stabilization grant. Is there a motion? I move that we, the governing board, accept the enrollment stabilization grant. Second. Motion made by Ms. Kravitz, seconded by Ms. Mellon to accept the uh, enrollment stabilization grant. Uh, Mr. Branza, would you like to add anything to this? Uh, Ms. Cordery? So many things I can say. Okay. Um, <laughs> So this is the second of the three grants that I was talking about earlier for the enrollment stabilization grant. This is the one that um, we have to have this approved by our governing board, submitted by November 8th, and then they will let us know by November 30th how much we get that we have to have spent by December 30th. So um, we're asking for your approval tonight to agree to all of these um, strings, I guess, attached to this money. Um, just so that we're able to, it, I'm, my estimation is it'll be about $3 million. Um, that is our hope, and they've just recently amended to, it used to be that we were going to have to only spend this on COVID fund, COVID related items, and we had to submit um, all sorts of documentation, invoices, things like that for that, for it to uh, be reimbursed for this grant. They've now come out and said the first $500 per student they're going to assume that it's for COVID related items, so we aren't having to justify that. And so they've released um, some of the strings a little bit for this for these funds. When we get them, we just need to get them. <laughs> Any questions? I, I have a question. Um, just to be clear, this is the enrollment stabilization grant is to sort of make up the deficit that we have because our enrollment numbers may be down, correct? That is absolutely correct, yes. This isn't necessarily $3 million of new money. This is to make us whole for any um, attendance or enrollment issues that we had due to COVID where we had kids that didn't come back. This was meant to um, help us with that, that gap. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Ms. Berger. Thank you. All in favor, motion on the floor is to accept the enrollment stabilization grant. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item is consideration to approve the Food Program Permanent Service Agreement. It is recommended that the Governing Board approve the Food Program Permanent Service Agreement. Uh, is there a motion? Motion made by Mr. Gwynn, seconded by Ms. Mellon, to approve the Food Program Permanent Service Agreement. 
Mr. Brienza, do you have anything you want to add to this that was in our packet? Uh, there was a lot of reading involved in it. Yes, there, there's a lot of reading involved. Um, this is a, a uh, necessary step for us to still participate in the National School Lunch um, Breakfast or Special Milk Programs and receive reimbursement for the, the, the monies that are spent on um, providing food for our students. And this is a necessary step that um, last time we had to do this about two and a half years ago. So we, we hope that two and a half years, five years from now, we'll have to do it again. But this just keeps us in compliance. Any questions or comments? Okay, the motion is to approve the food program permanent service agreement. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item 6.4, discussion and possible action to consider modification to the Union Union High School District returning to learning 2020-21 plan. Action is deemed appropriate by the governing board. Mr. Brienza, you or Ms. Thompson wants to lead into this? Um, I'll, I'll ask Ms. Thompson if she would like to share anything regarding this. Sure, uh, thank you for that. And Mr. Townsend, discussion comes prior. Because it says discussion, we're going to do discussion prior, yes. It is. Okay, it is. thank you. I'm, I just had a disconnect on the, a little bit of vo um, yeah. sound, so I'm good. Thank you. That says prior to the motion, yes. Thank you. Um, so at this time, uh, especially following the study session, um, I believe that the data um, that we show that we are connected to around 99.5% of our students in Yuma Union High School District continues to be a celebration and one that is uh, significant uh, considering the drastic uh, decline in enrollment across the state of Arizona. Um, I believe that the current plan that we are following, um, along with looking at ways to improve hybrid through talking with our teachers and continuing those collaborative movements through the teaching and learning team uh, are appropriate at this time. Yuma Union High School District continues to celebrate decades of um, working on establishing relationships with every student, and that includes their family. And uh, just want to continue to remind us all that teachers um, continue to be concerned about students that they would lose to either going strictly AOI or who would not be in a position to come back to uh, in-person learning. I know this continues to be a, a conversation, and I appreciate the opportunity to, to lead into that. Um, and if, if needed, I have a further comment depend at the will of the board's discussion. Thank you. Okay, uh, so if anybody would like to make a motion or just continue discussion, we can do either on this at this point. Which Ms. Connors, you want a motion or? Uh, I'm, I'm happy to do discussion. Okay. Um, so I have a question, which would be the uh, teaching and learning team. Um, the question that I have is how often are they revisiting this plan, this hybrid plan specifically? Um, and if we are attempting to establish relationships with students, do our students get surveyed also? I mean, is it just like a, we assume that, that kids are thinking this? And is there any academic record that we can have equal across all of the schools to compare how our students are doing in this two day on, three day off type learning scenario? Um, the ability to have a choice appears to be a great one. And everybody seems to be able to make their own choice based on their family and their students' needs, which is perfect, especially in our district where we talk about every student. Um, and, I, and I really appreciate that. I have a concern that the hybrid offerings that we are giving right now is just not enough. Um, maybe there's a different way we can do it or a different amount of days or something. I would hope to learn when the teaching and learning team does discuss this data or um, polling, how often does that happen? I believe that there is a group of families that feel like although we are offering different choices, we're not offering them the choice that they want. 
And so that was why I had hoped that we would be able to discuss that. So um, in answer to that, and I, I'll try to hit all of those points, but uh, let me start with, I assume nothing. Uh, we meet uh, regularly at a cabinet level with the teaching and learning team, which is led by the chief academic officer, Eric Brooks. Um, but those meetings, um, it's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with Major Bernie's words, right? Not a lot of people understand it. Uh, when he was talking about the MCJROTC, and I would say that that's pretty much the same with the way Yuma Union works, because we are unique in that our meetings uh, take place regularly and at um, different levels, but also in different circles. So the teaching and learning team for us is not one or two people. It also incorporates the ILs. Um, and various teacher leaders. And that was, um, of course, the uh, purpose of the last week's study session. The information that you all received was in direct relationship to questions that we were asked prior to that meeting and we attempted to answer uh, through that presentation. Um, the teaching and learning team, I would say, meets sometimes biweekly, if not more than that because of Mr. Brooks' constant uh, actions and um, meeting time with different ILs. We also, to answer the question about uh, surveying, uh, right now surveys would um, be in the form of attention to attendance data as well as performance data. And like everywhere else in the United States of America and the globe, we know that our students are not achieving at the highest uh, level across all student groups. But the students who have access and opportunity uh, with families um, who are supporting their work are, are achieving at um, high, high rates. I don't have a specific number for you, but um, that is the data that we look at as the actual practitioners. Uh, we know that this hybrid model doesn't work for everyone. Nobody uh, thought that our first stab at it would. But I would just remind um, everyone that we are a system of 11,200 plus students and 998 employees. We cannot turn around the way that maybe a small office staff would or a small business would and it, it, it really incorporates a lot of buy-in from the actual teachers who are boots on the ground. And that means a lot of opportunity to meet. Uh, additionally, we've had two Tuesdays where we have um, had table talk, again, teaching and learning team and uh, chief academic officer Eric Brooks facilitate that. Um, but that work allows teachers um, to come to the table with maybe their perceptions, the, the challenges that they are facing. All of them continue to bring forward that um, keeping kids engaged and keeping attendance is something that requires a lot of ongoing work. And that's at all levels. Uh, so we are looking at how to maybe look at the hybrid plan that we are currently using, how we might be able to um, better meet the needs of, of all of the students, but we know that no one plan meets everyone's uh, op, you know, needs or desires, uh, but we're really working hard at that. I'm sure I forgot something in there and I apologize, but uh, coming from the practitioner piece, that's you know, what I can offer on some of that. Thank you for the explanation. Um, the staff buy-in that you mentioned, uh, um, I'm curious about what percentage of our staff enjoy the hybrid learning? Because it definitely sounded at our work session that the workload for teachers were double, and sometimes triple, to manage these different groups of students. So I, I, perhaps I need to be more clear. Nobody enjoys any of this. There, the, the word enjoy does not come into our daily vocabulary uh, while we're not seeing every student on a regular basis. Yeah, the teacher, that speaks to our teachers' um, desire, their will, their professionalism, and their why of teaching in Yuma Union High School District. I can't remember ever hearing any teacher say, oh, I love this model. I love waking up to, you know, emails. I love waking up to parents calling or, you know, whatever, or whatever the needs or um, nobody's saying they enjoy not seeing their all of their students at the same time. But... 
uh, in the interest of community health, uh, organizational health, and um, just culture and climate, as well as trying to meet all of the needs uh, of the many and the every. This is um, the, the best model at this time. And again, realizing that uh, we know that we need to continue monitoring it and looking at what we can do as if, if there is a change. So when do you anticipate having another um, update to this plan? Um, I believe the teaching and learning team are looking at, well, they've been looking at it all semester long, so I, I'm not going to be able to give you a date, but uh, there may be some potential change second semester. Does any other board member have a question or a comment or? No, I go back to you. I'm just very impressed at all the work from the admin, the teachers, the students. Um, I'm just really proud of the work and, and I'm glad to walk. So thank you. You know, uh, we don't always get our way. Back to when I graduated from high school, my friend Joe Cardis did one of those on the diet for the kids. Yeah. And, and it doesn't work. No, she's not her. But he did. He went to on the diet. And, that, and that's a poor example. But we didn't ask, we didn't ask for this COVID deal. And I believe we're doing the best we can. And not everybody's going to get what they want. I'd like to be able to get what they want. But um, sometimes we get what we need. The hardship is not a great thing, but it's a learning experience. I feel that we have explored this very well. I also feel that, that, that when we hired Gina to be our superintendent, that she was well qualified on how to run a school district. I don't think anybody in the United States of America hired a superintendent that was going to perform perfectly in a COVID situation. Nobody hired anybody like that. We haven't had one of those before. It's brand new. I think we're doing the best we can with what we have available. And I and I I think we should keep looking at full time. I don't think we should ever stop looking at that. But right now, I think we're moving ahead. And that's my feelings. Thank you. And I'd like to say, you know, back um, when this all started, and I don't remember the dates of the, the month that we approved it. But uh, we did, you know, authorize, uh, the board gave the authority to Mrs. Thompson and the, uh, her staff to continually monitor what was going on and to develop this learning plan. And uh, I think, you know, through the presentations at the various board meetings, we've had two work study sessions on this now, uh, that they've definitely shown us that they're continuing to look at and update and uh, monitor the situations the, the, that uh, are given to us by the health department, the state department of education, the Arizona department of health. And uh, uh, I think we've been incredibly updated uh, uh, and briefed on what's you know, going on from uh, a reg regular basis. So I want to say I appreciate all of that. Um, so, is there any other questions or comments from the board? I um, I appreciated the fact that we had this opportunity to discuss it, and I really think that it's important that we continue to discuss it as it works. I know that public health is our number one concern, and I agree with that. And uh, thank you. That's all. Okay, there is an opportunity if anybody wants to make any motion, or we do not have to, and we can just move on. I'm good. Okay, no other motions? Um, I am going to make the motion just out of, uh, uh, so we have it on the record, that uh, we remain with the current learning plan with the ongoing work by the teaching and learning team to continue to modify and improve hybrid and to continue to look into uh, moving forward as, as opportunity arises. Motion was made by Mr. Townsend, seconded by Mrs. Mellon, to uh, remain with the current learning plan with ongoing work by the teaching and learning team to continue to modify and improve hybrid and to continue to monitor and move forward. 
uh, with our program. Is there any questions or discussion? If I may right. add to the question, and maybe that's included in the monitoring of forward, but does that include looking at full time? Yeah, they can continue looking at the other options, yes. Okay. That's my intent, so it's clear. Any, okay, any other questions or comments? Hearing none, proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next item is we do have Mr. Branza, a work session on November 18th. You want to update us a little bit on that? Yes, uh, on November 18th, um, from 5 to 6, will be a work session with the architect that we're working with for the Summerton High School. Um, we'll, we'll be going over some of the um, presentation that they have uh, regarding um, security and layout of the school itself. So we hope everyone can be there, which will be here in the professional development building from five to six on okay. November 18th. And then we also have our regular meeting December 9th, 515, right here. And that date also it will be after the school facilities board meeting, which we're on the agenda. So we may have a report in the superintendent's report on that. If, excuse me, Mr. Johnson. If I need to attend that meeting December virtually, am I going to be able to? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Pre President Townsend, um, if I could just inform the board on the November 18th uh, work session, that will be led by uh, architect uh, uh, Carmen Wyckoff and her team. There may be um, documents that we need to send ahead of time, but I just want to let you know that's kind of out of my control. I'm going to try to get them to you as soon as possible, but they are looking at working uh, interactively with the board, not only to share plans, but to go through um, future planning. So I, I'm hoping that the planning principal can also attend uh, on that evening. And I thank you for in advance for that. And uh, we'll get the documents to you as soon as we can get them from the architect if there is anything to preview. Okay. With that, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously.